Good afternoon. I'm Michelle Masucci. I think you all know me. Um, I'm, the co I'm the faculty chair and co-chair of the FTP. I'm really happy to be welcoming you all to this business meeting today. Um, our purpose is to really deal in a, in a deep way with the engagement issue that's been a theme throughout the strategic planning process. Um, and my hope is that um, we'll be able to get some really good feedback from all of you. So I encourage you to be uh, make yourself seen and heard <laughs> throughout the meeting. Um, we'll do our best to open up the mics um, to your comments so that you can uh, be a part of the conversation. We're very fortunate to have um, two parts to this meeting. One is that we've invited Jim Luther and Maria Kozalka from NSF to do another take on, um, or I should say to do a deeper dive on the federal engagement working group activities and particularly to elicit input from all of you on how, uh, on how you view the relationship with our federal partners. And, and I think that we're really, really uh, thrilled that Maria in particular could be with us um, to be able to be a part of that conversation and to hear directly from you. The second part of our conversation is going to be to focus on, again, a deeper dive on the evaluation piece, which we talked about in our last faculty forum and where Robert um, held a, um, a, a town hall for those people who were interested, I think a very interesting and successful town hall earlier in the year. And we wanna build on that and talk more about our directions in terms of evaluation. Just as a third note, um, you may have seen an uptick in the faculty listserv of uh, information that we have been seeking for various groups around the FDP who are interested in the faculty voice. Um, I'm very eager for your feedback on the thought exchange process that you've been asked to participate in. And we certainly do hope that you will continue to provide input when those kinds of requests come out. And I know Jim Luther, who's gonna be talking about federal engagement working group in a moment, will talk more about that. And I see Julie Thatcher just joined us as well, um, who's also a part of that working group. So um, last thing is that we'll continue to be utilizing um, the listserv to be able to reach out to you. Uh, I wanna put on your radar that as I come to the end of my first term as, a, as the chair and Robert as the co-chair, of the faculty committee will be renewing, um, will re be uh, uh, holding um, a new election to either return us to our offices or uh, to find and identify new leadership for the faculty committee. So I just wanna make you aware of that because that'll all come in through the listserv. So with those introductory comments, I wanna turn it over to Robert and Robert, please uh, share your thoughts. I just wanna welcome everyone uh, to this conversation today and, and thank you for being part of FDP. Uh, it's, it's clear that we have entered into a time where virtual tiles is the way that we engage. Um, I'll tell you as an optimist that I was hoping to be beyond the pandemic uh, by this time. <laughs> I'm sure many of you as well, uh, but we're not. And, uh, and, and that, 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 that really sets up the stage for, for how we engage now and in the future, but, but each and every one of you are dealing with it on your own campuses. Um, and if you're still facilitating uh, classwork in addition to your research activities, then I'm sure that you're engulfed with that um, dilemma and activity uh, frequently. And so related to FDP, and you've heard this throughout the meeting is that um, the likelihood of us being back in person, uh, we are, we're currently in October, the next scheduled time is January, 2022. We recognize that um, the likelihood of that being available to us um, uh, is fading. And so we're, we're still monitoring uh, the Delta variant and the mu variant and the next variant. Um, we are, we're cognizant of the budgets that each and every one of you have um, or don't have at your institutions for travel or travel related restrictions like we have here at Emory. Um, and those things are, those, those things are real uh, challenges related to uh, engaging in the way that we're accustomed to engaging. 
Uh, I don't think any of us began facilitating research-related activities and teaching to be virtual. Um, I've tried it once in a graduate class and gave my students an option of showing up in person or being online and no one showed up in person. And I, I changed that quickly in the syllabus, um, uh, quickly for the, for the next time. That was, that was a mess. So anyway, um, it's really, really good to be here with you all. And please engage in the conversations. The first one related to federal engagement um, is critical, it is critical related to the faculty's perspectives and, and partnership with our federal government and our sponsors and the, the administrative personnel that, that facilitate all of the actions because growing our global research activities is a partnership um, between our institutions and the federal government. And, and then we'll also have a conversation about evaluation, as Michelle already mentioned. And I, I, I am gonna pick your brains related to how might we suggest um, activities to be evaluated for later. And um, that, that's part of this continuous quality improvement initiative of evaluation that we'll be launching. So welcome aboard. It's, it's late on a, I don't even know what day of the week, Tuesday maybe. Um, and it's, it's really good to be with y'all. So I'll turn it back over to Michelle. So with those uh, very introductory comments, um, I want to welcome Jim Luther, uh, Julie Thatcher, and Maria Kozalka to talk more about the Federal Engagement Working Group and uh, to really open up a conversation with the faculty directly on your inputs related to that. So I'm going to turn it over to Jim. Great. Thanks, Michelle. As the uh, slides are coming up, um, um, Michelle mentioned a number of thought exchanges that have gone out over the last couple of days. I think you received an email from Michelle on the thought exchange related to Thursday's finance audit and compliance session. I'm guessing that normally a lot of faculty might not come to that highly technical session, although you're always invited. But for that session, for that thought exchange, um, and I'm just putting a, a little plug in here before we start this discussion. Um, I would ask that if you get a minute, take a look at that thought exchange. It is focused on what we in the finance area call the costing aspect of uh, data sharing and management. So there's a million issues related to data sharing and management, whether it's NIH, whether it's other sponsors. Uh, what we're going to talk about on Thursday is the costing aspects of it. In other words, who pays for it and how is it paid for? And, uh, and so this thought exchange is faculty focused, although we have a lot of administrators that are responding, which is fine. And it's trying to get into a little bit of detail. What are your concerns? What are the issues? And how can we support it? So uh, I'd ask that you do that. If you want to listen into that session, it's, a, it's an hour long uh, session and we'll, we'll spend 30 minutes on this topic alone. So if you can join us, that's wonderful. If you can't, that's fine as well. And Michelle, did you say you were gonna resend that thought exchange? I am gonna re I am gonna resend the thought exchange at the conclusion of the FDP meetings. Um, and that's great. And, yeah, and as noted, there'll be other <laughs> messages to come to the listserv. So stay tuned on the listserv for the faculty. That's great. And, and I'll say in the thought exchange, you can spend two minutes or 20 minutes. So don't think you get sucked into a long survey. You can go in, look around, put your thoughts out there and move on, or uh, you can spend more time. That's completely up to you. Um, so now we'll move into the Federal Engagement Working Group. Uh, next slide. As Michelle mentioned, uh, myself, Maria from uh, NSF and Julie Thatcher, uh, the project manager is on today. Um, as you saw in those poll numbers, about three quarters of you saw much of this presentation um, yesterday, I guess. I'm losing track of my time. It's yesterday. yesterday. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, yesterday. So, so these are largely the same slides, but what Maria, Julie, and I want to do is put more of a faculty focus and the faculty spin on it. And what we're gonna end up with that we didn't yesterday is hopefully more discussion. So this is kind of seeding the slides or just to seed the discussion. And this can go wherever is most helpful uh, in the federal engagement perspective. But as Michelle 
uh, mentioned, uh, engagement was a theme of the strategic planning. So as part of that, uh, we uh, assembled this federal engagement working group uh, with the individuals you see up on the screen. We also were aided with federal consultants. These were individuals that make sure that we were keeping the federal perspective involved as well as the, the, the institutional uh, and faculty representatives as well. Next slide. And so again, knowing that many of you have seen these, I'm not going into the details, but the strategic planning identified the need for this federal engagement work group. Uh, it identified that, 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 the, uh, that over time, because of the sheer growth in number of institutions, number of attendees and federal engagement, that we could do um, a better job and figuring out a way to um, incentivize and enhance the, the federal engagement is so critical to this discussion. Next slide. So um, we had a number of goals. I won't read all of these, but um, specifically, this is about creating sustainable engagement. Uh, as all of you know, the, the, the federal partners, just like you as faculty and their administrators are uh, jumping from one issue to another. But the only way we truly get things done is if it's sustained engagement, right? All, many issues kind of come and go, but these critical issues, whether it's technology or policy or process, it's all about sustained engagement from, from all the parties that are part of this, that are part of the FDP. And that's what um, this discussion is about. Next slide. And I think I turn it over to, to, to Maria now, and I yes. should have invited mm -hmm. Maria and Julie to jump in on my prior slides. I went through them so quickly, but if you have oh, anything okay. to add, Maria and Julie, please do so. No, I just wanted to thank the faculty for participating. I know it's a, you know, a late afternoon, but um, we we really want to get your feedback. So, and I want to thank everybody for listening. You know, who has to listen to this twice? You know, to thank you. And again, we look forward to your feedback. So, um, as part of this federal consultant feedback, we looked at um, address the. Um, challenges. And we've all heard that FDP is growing. And I think that's, you know, that is a plus. Um, but you have to keep in mind that federal resources, you know, are limited. And um, a as you know, each agency has their own mandates, their own mission, their priorities. I like to pick on USDA NIFA because I used to actually work in the, as the policy and oversight division director there a few uh, years ago before joining um, NSF. And, you know, in the case of USDA, that's a unique agency. They have a farm bill that, um, you know, comes around every five years and that has to be addressed. And that's something, you know, as, as uh, a, a federal agency like NSF or NIH, that's not something we have to worry about. So, you know, this last bullet um, has to do with agencies having their own their own internal systems, processes, and we may be focusing uh, within. Next slide, please. So the suggestions was uh, from our federal consultants was that time and attention is limited. And uh, a, recommend, a big recommendation was to look at current topics. So we know that with a new administration, new leadership, priorities change. So you know what would it, what may have been a priority last year may not be, have the same uh, urgency you know this year. And if you've heard any of the uh, NSF agency updates, you've heard from my colleagues. In fact, I think it was said. Yesterday, you know, we want to hear from you early and often. Well, that goes in the reverse. You know, we want agency input early and often as well. So it goes both ways. Next slide, please. So what were the draft recommendations? So um, again, I apologize for those who have heard this, but again, we're looking for your feedback um, on this on this topic. So the first the first suggestion was to create these federal liaisons, and uh, this could be a faculty member or it could be uh, an FDP representative. And that the idea is to check in on a periodic basis, maybe quarterly, and then solicit federal, you know, uh, so solicit uh, federal needs initiatives. So it's basically, you know, contact, con you know, have a liaison that would contact, let's say, NSF and say, you know, what are what are the two big priorities? What are the needs? 
Um, that's idea number number one. Number two is one that I really enjoy. Um, and I think they're really valuable. And we're calling them pop-up listening groups. And what this is, um, when we, you know, from an agency perspective, we want to hear from faculty and we want to hear from research administrators on your thoughts on how to, de you know, how to develop things or policy issues or, you know, things that, that come up. And I've had three pop-up listening sessions that I've worked with. Uh, Jim and some other folks at FTP, and I've asked for feedback. I, you know, whether it's FAP, it has something to do with FAPIS or reporting or you know any other issue. You know, I've said I need. You know, I could use some advice. You know, from from uh, the FDP perspective on this particular topic, and I can't tell you I've been um, so amazed at how you know you guys have been able to pull together a group so quickly um, and provided that feedback. And I think if you look a few years ago, um, Jean Torno in our biology department did a session at, at FDP for faculty, which had to do with the NSF application process. And I know she has said that that, that um, feedback that she received from faculty was invaluable. The next idea, uh, was Maria, providing... could I jump in? Yeah, sure, go could ahead. Yeah, yeah, in? you should feel yeah, free to I just jump want, in at any I point. Just wanted, thank you. I just wanted to follow up on this one because we've done this, uh, as Michelle knows, uh, a little informally with uh, the foreign influence mm -hmm. topics where, where the agencies wanted a faculty perspective, right? They, they hear from us administrators all the time. We complain about regulations. We complain about uh, burden and so forth. But when Michelle gets on the phone or Alice gets on the phone or a faculty member gets on the phone and says, this is how it impacts me and my science. This is why I can't, you know, I'm, I, I don't know what exactly to do when I'm submitting a proposal. This is why I'm confused as to what goes on my bio sketch. I, I, as, much as, I, as, as much experience as I think I have, I cannot articulate that to Maria or NSF or NIH, anything like a faculty can. So these listening sessions, the idea would be um, kind of low barrier to entry, high value. If Maria said, hey, I want five faculty, two from public institutions, two from small institutions, one from an HBCU to talk about a topic, we would reach out, get that group together. And, it, and it's not meant to bypass any of the committee work. It's meant to right. supplant it and support it. I'm sorry, support it in a really effective low barrier way. And, uh, and, and I think it just has a high opportunity for value, or at least that's what we hope. Mm -hmm. So as we're talking, I was thinking about, you know what I could use? I'm, I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag. I could use a faculty perspective on how to get faculty to onboard um, to uh, NSF's new uh, proposal system in research.gov. So I don't know, I, I know there was about 350 participants in this afternoon's call and you saw the demo, but we wanna see the numbers go up. And I think you've heard that, um, I pr you've, you've probably heard Gene Feldman say, tell you that Fastlane is going away and it is, it's gonna go away at the end of next year. So here is an opportunity, you know, to get your feedback, if we could do some sort of pop-up listening session on how to get how to onboard faculty to research.gov. So I, I'm sorry, I have to apologize for you know implanting this idea, but it, you know I thought of this and I, you know I could re really use some help. So let me let me keep moving on uh, point number three. So provide agency update tem templates, and I mentioned this yesterday. So you've heard the the wonderful agency updates. And federal agency updates. And what we'd like to know is, is the information that the agencies are providing value? So is there a way, you know, what, what is it of interest to you when you listen to those updates? Is it, you know, information about the funding opportunity announcements that are coming down the road? Or are there other um, items of interest? So, you know, we'd like to know how can we update those? From an agency perspective, what we thought might be useful is to maybe have the, each of the agencies talk about their, you know, two top priorities that they're working on, uh, you know, in the next six months. So we thought that might be useful, but I'd like to, you know, I'd like to hear from you. 
and then also create agency uh, web pages. So as I mentioned yesterday, we're not looking to recreate uh, NSF or NIHs or any of the federal agency updates. But you know, if you're if you're a faculty member and you're looking for information on a particular um, topic, let's say research integrity, well. If you belong to FDP, you might know where to look. You would know that you would go into the agenda, but you probably couldn't remember which meeting that was um, discussed. So you'd probably have to, you know, look around. So the idea is then, um, you know, we, we uh, FDP has these institu institutional profiles. Well, couldn't we do something like that for federal agencies where you find all of the updates that are given by NSF or NIH or NIFA or any of the other agencies and what other additional information might be relevant. So you could go directly and find that information. So that's that's what's meant by create um, agency web pages. And then the next one was uh, consider levels of federal engagement. So the question has come up come up that um, there's been a there's been a lot of interest from other federal agencies whose mission is not solely to fund research. Um, so there may be other um, other interest by a federal agency who, you know, there might be a certain aspect that they might be interested in participating in um, F in FDP. So could we consider maybe, you know, having various uh, levels of membership? Um, and again, the last one is just to create meaningful engagement, working groups, committee participation, uh, demonstrations and what other, you know, if these are listening groups, um, just to continue and expand those opportunities. Next slide, please. So what are our next steps? Well, we're going to continue vetting these with our um, agency partners. Uh, we wanted to have th this discussion with you, get your ideas from a faculty perspective. Uh, we plan in phase two to develop an implementation plan and then uh, to execute that plan. Next slide, please. And um, I thought it was very important to mention that faculty really play a critical role in FDP. And so we, we really want the federal perspective. I think that faculty one, you know, you're either, uh, you know, in the trenches doing the research or you know you're at the bench, you're in the field, you're right. You're the one. You are the ones that are actually coming up with the ideas, writing the writing the proposal, and then submitting uh, the application. And as a federal agency, you know we're here um, to work with you and to collaborate. And as research administrators, we're also here to work in partnership. So so this is the message that I wanted to just um, take a moment to share with you. And I think our next slide. Uh, we'll go through the questions. I don't know who wants to start this discussion. Do, did we determine who who wants to uh, go through these questions, ask these questions? Michelle? Um, we're we're happy to facilitate in doing okay. that. I've invited All right, that sounds everybody. great. Yeah, I've that ever, sounds I've, great. I've invited everybody as well to, okay. um, to comment in the chat, which I'm monitoring. Okay. Um, or to raise their hands for comment. I think what okay. happens when you raise your hand is um, I'll be able to, or Robert will be able to unmute you so that you can speak. Okay. I think everyone's on mute at this point. Okay. So um, do you want me to go through the questions or do you want to do it, uh, Maria? Yeah, I, I think you could, you know, either you or Robert, do you want to do that? I, it doesn't really doesn't matter to me. Well, and I'm Let's just start by saying um, we welcome your comments, so don't be shy because I know many of the people on this call have lots of thoughts about, okay. uh, have lots of thoughts, have lots of thoughts and reactions to what Maria and Jim have presented. So let me give you a moment to think about what you'd like to share and, uh, and please do so. One thing that I did want to mention uh, that I think I think we mentioned, maybe mentioned yesterday, was that as part of the working group, we did include, um, you know, Jerry, and that was very thoughtful because um, uh, Jerry has the perspective, not only uh, from, a, from the university perspective, but being a former NSF IPA, he had that perspective, you know, from a federal agency um, viewpoint. So I just wanted to point that out as well. I saw Don 
John, did you did you want to say anything with, and have a reaction? No, I came in late, but everybody's got their faces covered up, and I miss seeing everybody's faces. I know. <laughs> Open them up, folks. I, I, I think because we were in presentation mode. Um, feedback. What do, you, what do you think about the liaison uh -huh. model with the federal government related to FDP? Anyone? I mean, yeah. there's a comment from yeah. Nadine Connor who says the most impactful FDP project for her is the workload survey. And it says that she cites that frequently. Yeah, indeed, Josh, Joshua. Um, hi, um, yeah, I, I mean, so I, I think one of the things that, I mean, I guess I'm reacting to the first question here about <laughs> my thoughts and reactions, um, that it might be good in facilitating connections with various federal agencies to um, identify what our different sort of areas of experience and expertise are. I mean, so, I mean, I, I mean, I've worked mainly with NSF. I don't, I, I don't really have a lot of insight to, to add to NIH. I mean, you know, occasionally I have some things to say to them. I don't know a whole lot about uh, USDA, although I'm learning more because I have colleagues who work with NIFA a lot. Um, I, I like like Jerry. I've been been uh, on the other side of the uh, of the uh, transaction at, at NSF for a couple of years, so I under, certainly understand uh, the federal perspective. But I think that um, sort of identifying some of those uh, strengths uh, or experiences across different faculty might. Uh, representatives might be a good way to help federal agencies to identify the the groups of people who are most likely to be good for picking their brains about about particular things that they're working on. Mm -hmm. So I think part of the part of the uh, federal liaison idea was also to get an individual to um, get an individual who was familiar with that particular agency. So we wouldn't if. If you know, if you were to let's say volunteer to be the NIH liaison, we would expect that you'd at least have some. You know, you, you maybe you you've received grants or applied for grants, so you have some understanding of the NIH process. Same same with uh, NIFA or any of the other federal agencies. But that's a good point, Michelle. I think that is a good point. It, it, it does, we, I don't know if we specifically talked about this, Maria and Julie, but, but I do wonder if the, lia, lia, the federal liaison should be plural, like a faculty and an administrative rep. So Michelle and I would be assigned to NSF. Uh, uh, you know, if that's Michelle's background and that's my background. And again, these liaisons are all about uh, you know, probably, you know, periodically catching up with the agency, but probably three men, three weeks before the meeting and a week or two after the meeting, brief and debrief based on how the meeting went, uh, as well as regular touchdown points to say, are you getting what you need from FDP? How can we engage with you more? And, oh, by the way, we need more from you, Maria, right? I mean, th this is a big issue for universities and and we, we've tried to, you know, we've had these discussions. Uh, can we, can we, can you provide an update at the agency updates, or can we discuss this at the finance committee, or can you bring a topic to the faculty committee, the faculty forum? Right, that's the type of in, of discussion and engagement. And I do wonder if kind of combining both a faculty and an administrator might be a powerful way to always have that faculty perspective there. Something to think about as we move to phase two and executing on this. I think that's a, that's a great idea to have a faculty and an, admi an administrator. And you know, maybe you might want to, that to be a rotating position as well. You know, just a thought. Yeah, there's a, there are a couple of comments I wanna share. Um, okay. Karen Dent is, uh, is agreeing that the idea of a pop-up group to give real-time first-person feedback on how actions and requirements impact faculty. Um, and Amy Rontree is agreeing with Joshua that liaison should represent the diversity of the funder, familiarity, and institutional needs. And I, I just, I think those are both really good comments. We've, we've tried to do more of that in, in recent times of putting together 
uh, groups that have maybe a, a shared affinity for a particular topic so that we can actually elicit the direct feedback. And I think um, our, our sort of observation is that that's been very useful when it's very focused, as I think both Jim and Maria were speaking to earlier. In terms of um, this idea of aligning the background of faculty to be able to be more insightful on specific things, one of the things we've been talking about doing um, in, in sort of from the leadership perspective is getting a little bit better of a profile of each of our individual um, FDP uh, representatives. Um, we, we get sort of the cursory information of the name and affiliation, but we don't necessarily have as much information. That was part of the thinking behind having Michael Kuziak and Jason Carter work with the executive committee to elicit interest areas that people had in engaging the FDP. Um, and I think you all have had uh, a fair amount of feedback and Jason and Michael again presented um, yesterday on some of the findings that they had from the survey that they did. And I think this is our effort to try to do a better job of aligning what people can do and want to do. But I think we could be even more specific about that with respect to engaging with our federal partners. Um, Kelly, Kelly Shaver is saying um, the federal update should say how the biofacts bio sketch is fixed in Science CB. And in fact, Jace, uh, and one of the things I will say is that um, we often hear uh, through the faculty steering committee and through the faculty committee um, commentary about the federal update. So I'm glad that you brought that up, Maria. And, and just sort of generally speaking, um, I think the faculty feedback that we hear, but I, I would love everybody to share their views of this so that I'm not the only one saying this, um, is that the updates tend to be very much kind of geared towards what administrators would be thinking about in the submission of a proposal and what they might communicate to faculty at their institutions. I think from a faculty perspective, certainly understanding strategic directions of a federal funding agency. I think our plenaries where we've been bringing high level leadership in from our federal agencies to talk about the direction of funding has, all, has been um, something that faculty have, have embraced. But I'm very eager to hear from people on the chat or if people wanna comment live, what else they might like to be, um, to be hearing from in terms of the, the federal partners. Others? This is a shy group today. So there was a, a question from Joshua about including uh, program officers as well as part of these uh, presentations. And um, I think that sounds like a great idea. If there's a topic that we can include a program officer, we could do that as well. Um, we have the um, the policy meetings. Uh, Beth mentioned that there's a, a policy um, the NIH update, those are pretty much for newbies. You know, if you're, a, if you're new to applying to NSF and those usually do include a program officer in those presentations. So that's a good, that's actually a good one that you could probably share with your faculty and that's free, it's online. They can do, you know, they can do it, you know, they can watch those. Um, in, you know, they don't have to, they do have to register, but they could watch that later. So I think that's a good one. Yeah, there's, there's, there's some commentary on the federal updates. So um, Robert Butera is saying that as a faculty member, the agency updates are the least informative aspect of the meeting. There's too many details. There's not enough strategy. There's no real big picture. And I mean, I think he really is capturing what a lot, of, a lot of faculty actually experience in the updates. They recognize that it's important information to be shared with the institutions, but it's not really the, the pertinent information that a faculty member in particular might be paying attention to in terms of how they bring their science forward. Jerry is saying that Kelly's comment brings forward the important idea that if we move to widely used data sources, um, science CV grants, uh, .gov, et cetera, the agencies need to take partial ownership of helping to navigate these resources. They cannot just say it's not their resource. We have another comment from Carmen. These faculty administration impact groups are a good way forward. However, the main issue that the faculty faces is that federal funding does not meet the demand. 
many tenure decisions and negatively because of the lack of funding. So our emphasis should also be um, on what to do about raising funding levels. Um, Joshua is coming back, so maybe agency updates should not be plenary sessions. And then Nadine, maybe Congress needs to be involved beyond what a faculty member wants. I think the agency update uh, presenters lack consistency in what they choose to present and why. I think that's a really uh, good point, Robert, that there, there's also an unevenness of the presentations. So some of them tend to be more, um, really much more geared to um, like the PAP guide in NSF. We tend to hear a lot about that. Um, others might be on compliance areas and so forth. And so it, because it's sort of a catch-all of administrative updates, but I think you get the gist of, um, of the commentary on the plenary um, around the federal updates. And so I would say that, that it has its place, but there's probably a hunger for a lot of, of other kinds of, 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 of you know, ways of delivering information and bringing people together. It's a great point though, Michelle, if I could pause on that, because you know, for me, the federal agency updates are some of the best part. But as an administrator, right, that's what I'm looking for. But I, I see exactly the point from a faculty perspective. So we'll have to talk about, you know, if, if the simultaneous goal is increased faculty engagement as well as a more sustained federal engagement, how do we do that, right? Um, so I think that's the great point. Yeah, um, another comment. Yes, absolutely. Another comment. Um, Stephen is saying he's more interested in participating in the development stages of federal policies, not being informed of what's already been decided. Mm -hmm. um, Alice is saying the most imp impactful FTP project for her was the very early project that led to expanded budget authorities. Looking forward, what would encourage agency to reach out to an FTP pop-up group? to explore potential unexpected consequences of a plan change and an agency requirement. And I think that's a really important point too, which is that the faculty uh, often tend to think of themselves as a focus group for anticipating the issues that mm. haven't been thought about. Um, and Jim, I think you've done a terrific job of that in terms of the federal, um, you know, uh, the sort of foreign influence working group of just helping multiple federal partners really um, look under the hood at both how universities function, but also the faculty role within that. Um, Alice goes on to say, as an example, FDP faculty could have helped NIH pre-think the likely issues of expanding clinical trial requirements to large areas of behavioral interventions. I'm going to say it's the gift that keeps on giving is the clinical trial changes. Uh, we still hear about that as an issue. Nadine says, for increased faculty engagement, it's important to remember that we have no time. And I think that's also really, I mean, we, we all know that here true. as well, right? And I think that's true that what you were saying too, Maria, let me let you comment. No, I was going to say, you know, we recognize that you guys don't have time. And I think, you know, um, in one of the comments, um, you mentioned that the, the faculty workload survey was, you know, was one of the most important projects. And I think that that is something that, you know, as we're, you know, developing systems, which you know we have we, you know we have a lot of develop, uh, development going on. We we are looking at administrative burden. So I think that that it, that faculty workload survey is also the gift that gives on keeps on giving because you know that tells us hey you know we need to try to you know do a better job at reducing administrative burden. So I I just wanted to mention that. Michelle, I would follow up on a comment that uh, someone mentioned that they would love to be involved in the policy uh, development. Um, uh, another pitch for the Thursday discussion on costing, that is exactly what we're talking about, right? So right now, um, there's new data sharing and management um, requirements coming out. We are at the, the tip of the spear with NIH, but also with NSF and other agencies to talk about the policy related to who's gonna pay for it. So it's a great point, but I just wanted to throw that out again. I just wanted to give Stephen an opportunity to comment um, on that, on his comment. So I, I, yeah, I would just comment that, you know, I've heard over the years that, you know, faculty think of engagement as participation, two-way conversation of where we are being asked for feedback rather than being told what needs to be done or um, what's coming down the pike. 
maybe the administrators could handle that and tell us back at our own institutions. Um, so I, I, that's what I think of in terms of engagement as a faculty member, bringing that perspective. And you know, I think part of, and I'm just gonna elaborate here a little bit, that, you, know, I, you mentioned having a administrator and a faculty member, and you know, we have this group fact where that's really very crucial to understanding the entirety sure. of the institutional um, effects that these policies have. And the other thing we've learned is the value of some relationships. So when you talk about having liaisons, I think it's important that you also talk about having some consistent type interactions with the same types of people um, where they build this type of interaction and not keep going back and forth, sharing the same information with different people. Yeah, and just let me just jump in and give people um, just a quick instruction. We're happy to unmute anyone. You just have to raise your hand so that we know you want to be unmuted. That's the way the system is. The panel is uh, the panel is set up for us from the control standpoint. So please don't be shy. And by the way, Alice is agreeing with you, Steve. <laughs> Thanks, Alice. So Maria, you started. You started talking about this earlier related to what would be beneficial from your perspective, but maybe you can expand. What, from your perspective, representing the federal government, what would be the ideal level of engagement with faculty? What do you wanna glean from this exposure and experience with faculty from, from your seat? Hmm, I think that's a tough question. I think, uh, I think just having those two-way conversations, um, I think that would be, I think that would be invaluable and just seeing where, where we can have those conversations. I know I've seen the comments about policy development. We've heard about system development. We've heard about reducing burden. Maybe there's some way of identifying, you know, what are the key topics and then seeing how we can all work together to advance that particular issue. Um, you know, we, we've talked about reducing administrative burden. That's something that we're always thinking about. How can we reduce administrative burden? So I think that's a that's such a such a big I, I think that's such a big question, Robert. I think it's really a big question. <laughs> Kelly, I'm recognizing you. Uh, thank you very much, Michelle. I'm sorry to apologize to everybody. I am in the middle of traffic, so I couldn't do what I needed to do in text, but I can actually talk and amplify what I said in the text. One of the things that is troubling to faculty members who listen to the plenary session that is the federal update mm -hmm. is that if, if you listen with a faculty ear, uh, and I've also been an NSF program director, mm -hmm. if you listen okay. with a faculty ear, uh, there's an awful lot of, well, we're changing this. What the faculty hear anytime those words are said is, how will this increase the burden I already have? So I think that Every faculty, I would argue that every federal update should have three slides that mm -hmm. do not exist in them now. One is, here's everything that I'm saying today that will increase your burden. Oh my gosh, oh wow. One, one is, here's everything I'm saying today that will decrease your burden. And the third one is, here's everything that I'm saying about a particular process, and I'll pick on the biosketch or mm -hmm. current and pending support mm -hmm. or, or any of those things, here's how this request has already been integrated into Science CV. So though I'm telling you about it, you don't need to worry about it. Mm -hmm. Joshua, thank you, Kelly. Um, thank you for that, for those ideas. I, I, I agree with a lot that Kelly said. I, I think one of the things that, I mean, have, having sat in a lot of different seats, uh, having been 
at NSF having been a uh, research administrator, having been in, in the research office uh, mm -hmm. at University of Kansas and being a faculty member, uh, one of the things that I struggle with is that in the workload uh, survey, I, I mean, I understand that we spend a lot of time doing stuff that is described as administrative, but I also have some understanding about why some of it is necessary. And it's important for the research, some of it. And I think that having, I mean, I think that from the federal perspective, uh, it, would be, it would be helpful to us as faculty sometimes to hear not just what, we're, what it is we need to do, but from the point of view of those agencies to really articulate why these burdens are there in the first place. And so, uh, I mean, I, I don't think we wanna start and you know, decompose everything that's in every requirement, but when we get into redesigning or changing or altering something, let's talk about why, why it's there in the first place and engage some of the creativity of the group in thinking about how to do it in ways that doesn't have unintended consequences that add to burden. I think that's a really, really good point. You know, there, there's a comment in the chat that I think kind of crystallizes this as well. Um, and I think this is another way to think about it, which is that faculty often hear new requirements as ways to, you know, deny funding proposals. And so it's just, everybody knows how rigorous it is to be able to get a project in the first place. And every new requirement tends to be, you know, another sort of tool for differentiating between what does and doesn't get funded. And I think for a lot of faculty, you know, they're trying to be competitive, but they're also constantly calibrating how much time and effort do I put into this versus, you know, how much work do I have to do to be competitive in that particular um, process. So hopefully Carmen, I did your comment uh, justice. Um, there's another comment from Deborah. There have been many achievements that FDP made through FDP that decreased burden at the administrative end. It would be helpful to hear more how that feeds back into relieving the faculty burden. I think that's a really good point too, because you know things like the, the clearinghouse, which is clearly something that helps to move proposals through um, and, and get approved, or I should say move contract processes through and get approval faster, you know, faculty do benefit, but we don't necessarily see the direct line between that demonstration and the way in which faculty experience burden on the ground. I think that's a really good point. So the other comment I would, I would make um, in listening to this is, um, I think it would be important for us as federal agencies to explain why we're doing something. Um, you know, often at NSF, we do have various working groups before something, you know, gets moved forward. And um, I think, I don't know, maybe we just like, I'll take the, the session that we did um, that um, Stephanie did this afternoon. So she did the the, the, the PSM modernization. And I don't think that she included, um, you know, the why, you know, why are we moving off of fast lane? Um, and we do have, you know, we've in the past, we've provided that information, but I think from maybe from our perspective, we kind of thought, well, you know, we've talked about that. We've been talking about that for five years since we started this project. So sometimes, you know, we assume that that's, that's old news when, you know, maybe you're right, maybe we should explain the rationale behind why we're doing things this way or why do we need to do things this way. So I think that's, that's something that I've just gotten out of this conversation that we're having. And, and you're getting some Maria. agreement with that comment, so. Yeah, I think that's such a great point. Just it, 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 being able to work closely with Rebecca Kaiser and Gene Feldman mm -hmm. and Michelle Bowles and all this foreign influence, you know, the pressure they're seeing is coming from the GAO. It's coming right. from Congress. It's yep. coming from the NRPM, from President Trump, Trump's memo. It's coming from pending legislation. I mean, truly, uh, it's, it's being pushed upon them. And understanding the why is so critical 
to enable us to partner with them more effectively, but also for us to have a little bit of a better understanding. So I think that's a, I, I agree with what everybody is saying. Yeah, I think I think the other the other component that is important to go with the why, which which I think is vital, and the how is. I, I don't I don't get the feeling during the presentations that it it's really a two way. I want feedback. Let me know how this impacts you, and and I think we're. I'll say this. Um, knowing that I could probably provide recommendations on how to make it better uh, uh, to the group. But, but maybe, maybe part of it is looking at things that, that, that the any time a presentation is given, not just by the federal government, that you're soliciting feedback on how it's being received, how, it's being, how, how one is being impacted, and what suggest other suggestions uh, should be taken back for consideration. And that's any presentation. Um, because I guess I probably get in the habit of it as well is that we give these presentations and it's, it's mostly fully baked, right? And, and I think uh -huh. when we engage with smart, um, active, busy people, they, they want to contribute. And if there's no contribution, then, then you then you then you kind of migrate your mind to something you can actually contribute to, and and I think my it, it, it's possible that we might be missing where faculty could contribute to initiatives of the federal government, possibly. I think that's a, I think that's an important message that maybe we send back to the to the agencies that you're right a lot of the ideas are baked and I and it seems I and I, I well I think I've been participating in FDP I don't know 10 12 years maybe something like that and it and you're right these ideas do seem more baked when they're presented but there's also you know working groups or behind the scenes, um, uh, you know, work going on. So that was always my assumption. So maybe that needs to be presented as well, all the work, you know, that went behind this. I mean, today we presented, you know, we talked about, you know, how the process, how we did, you know, how we got to the recommendation. So maybe, you know, a little more emphasis needs to be spent on, well, we had a working group and this is what they did. And here's this, here are the final recommendations. I don't think we do, you know, I don't think we spend a lot of time on that. Yeah. And, and if there are future calls of working groups, maybe, maybe part of it is you know, we will we'll reserve a slot or two or whatever the number is for an FDP representative to engage in the working group to bring information back so they can be part of the right. contribution. So maybe that's a change in the format of the meeting, you know, that you do include more, you know, more working group sessions as part of the meeting. Yeah, I think that that is something that's, I mean, I think always when you can have a conversation, mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's a more interesting thing that comes out of it. There's an interesting, a couple of other interesting comments. Um, you know, one is that, you know, many faculty just kind of acknowledging many faculty are not going to learn why or maybe even be focused on the why new uh, requirements are coming down the road, but what they do not want is you know to write a proposal and then have to chase down 17 pages of additional documentation above and beyond the proposal and i guess i would take the liberty of adding especially when they don't feel confident in what information belongs on those pages and i think that gets to the core of a lot of people's anxiety and then then you know when you're not sure that just sucks your time so it's the uncertainty of it that actually takes the time because you can't actually execute when you don't know what to put and how it's being used mm -hmm. in an evaluation process. Um, there's another comment from Amy agreeing with Robert, maybe speaking to faculty forums could be a test bed or a focus group for helping working groups and funding agencies as they plan and design policy and process changes. Uh, 
Um, Kurt is also commenting what's not clear is what leverage, if any, FTP has with sponsors and their requirements. We ask them to squint real hard on the requirements and eliminate some, or do we suggest what possibly to get rid of or make easier? The options and interactions and mechanisms with sponsors aren't clear as a first time FDP participant. I think that's a really important comment as well, which is that we, we are um, the organization that is set up to be able to um, be a clearinghouse for a demonstration to make a process work better. But if it looks like we're just doing that on the edge of the process instead of actually wholeheartedly you know, tackling something that uh, really needs to be rethought, I think that's an interesting, I think that's a really interesting way to put it and something for us to think about as well. I mean, with, with, that, with that point, I, in thinking holistically, and, and, and please, please help me if, if this is not true, thinking over time, I think what we're missing is the driving of demonstrations in working with our federal partners. So we, we're expecting, possibly expecting the federal government to come to us and say, these are the things that we're thinking about and this is how it impacts you, instead of what we used to do, which was identify problematic areas and request them to be at the table with us going over these items, getting their input, and then making a formal recommendation for a demonstration to where we can actually partner and implement. Maybe we're off kilt just a little bit of what, how, how the government, uh, and, and Maria help if it's not true, what, what y'all are expecting of us. And so maybe we just have misaligned expectations of each other. Yeah, I, I, it's hard to say, you know, what your what expectation, what the federal government expects of you. I mean, I think that's a big question. I don't think I have the answer. I mean, you know, that depends what your, you know, what your role is, and you know, um, you know, if if you're, you know, let's say you're an applicant and you're applying to any of these programs, well, the expectations are that, you know, you follow, you know, follow the instructions and, and any of their requirements. I mean, I think those are the basic expectations, but I think, you know, other, you know, agencies like um, NSF and NIH, they, you know, they welcome feedback. And I think one thing about um, NSF that is unique, and I've worked at four federal agencies. So I've worked at HRSA, which is part of H, it's an operating division under HHS. I've worked at NIH in their policy office. I've worked at USDA and I've been at NSF for five years. I've done research, so I've been at the bench um, for five years. I actually publish science, scientific papers in breast cancer research. And then I also worked as a program officer for 16 years with colleges and universities uh, to advance um, undergraduate science education. So I know that community as well. Um, anyway, I don't know why, I don't know where I was going with that. I think I lost my chain of thought, but um, anyway, um, you were asking about the requirements and you know, what, what are the expectations of the, oh, I, I remember what I was going to say. So one thing that's unique about NSF is that, that NSF is really nimble for being a small agency. You know, it's, um, it's, it, it's, uh, you know, it does remind me of the workings of the university. There's a lot of working groups. There's a lot of thought because program officers, you know, come from a university setting. You know, there is experimentation and how things are done. There's a lot of talk, a lot of discussion, you know, before, before a new solicitation or a new idea is generated. I think with having um, Dr. Panchanathan, you know, as the director, I think that it's re reinvigorated um, NSF. And I think there's going to be, you know, hopefully the budget, uh, you know, everything works out okay. I think that there will be, you know, a lot of excitement and new opportunities um, down the road for all of you. So I think, you know, the story there is um, stay tuned. So, you know, I, I think, yeah, that, that's my perspective. No, that's fair. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna give JR the last word um, so that we have a little bit of time uh, for Robert to go through the evaluation piece. JR. 
Wow, what an honor. Thank you. <laughs> now, um, ha having attended FTP for a number of years, you know, I, I think this communication between agencies and, and faculty hasn't been what it could be in, in the sense that, um, you know, the agencies come, tell us what they want us to know and, and then go home. Maybe, and, and NSF has been good at this, and, and that is what's on the horizon, what's coming at you. I think NSF has probably been ahead of most of the other agencies as to what the future issues are. But what if we focused on those future issues? You know, here, here's what they are. We don't have policies drafted for these yet. And we'd like your input as to what those policies might look like. And here's a website where you can go give us some ideas. And rather than bring the policies to us and say, what do you think? Well, you know, most faculty don't think much about them. So there's not much thought to, to share there. Sure, we have comment periods, but I, I imagine if you count up the faculty responses, they're small. But if we have a chance to like, I think Robert mentioned earlier, help formulate those policies, put the ideas on the table up front, um, the buy-in, the awareness, and, and the thoughtfulness could be amazing. Just a thought. Thank you I for agree. listening. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree with your comment. Thank you, JR. And thank you to Jim and Maria for taking time um, to get us going on this conversation, which I hope has been useful for all of you and um, and especially Maria um, in your role kind of as the federal partner on the Federal Engagement Working Group. We really cannot uh, express how grateful we are for you to lend an ear to the conversation and, and to open the door for that. So thank you very much um, for your time this afternoon. Thank you all for Thanks, your time. Michelle. Thank and you. I wanted to thank I Jim also, and Julie as well. Thank you. Uh, same to you, Maria, as well as the rest of the, uh, the the working group members and the federal consultants. We couldn't have done it without that group. Exactly. It was a great group of people. Really great group of people. I agree. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your time and your feedback. Thank you all. Um, I okay. want us to turn our attention to the last agenda item, which is to follow up on our evaluation conversation. And so for that, uh, David will need you to share slides. And uh, Robert, I'm turning the floor over to you. All right, thank you. And I, I've, I've given this presentation, so I'm not gonna walk you through the full presentation, but there's a couple slides at the back that I really wanna engage. Just, just you to help formulate the last pieces of the draft evaluation plan. Next slide. Uh, we'll go through this. The working group is, is hefty in terms of uh, participation and they have contributed um, uh, significantly to where it currently stands. Uh, next slide. Um, and this is, I, I guess there's an important part here and I, I wanna hone in on it and ask you and uh, the question. When we talk about stakeholders of the FDP evaluation, when I gave the presentation and 75% of you or so were there, I mentioned that we have internal stakeholders and external, internal and external stakeholders. Our institutions that we represent are stakeholders of FDP, the federal government for which that they sit as in the tripartite, if you will, uh, role on uh, FDP is also their stakeholders, but it, it's the individuals that engage, but it's the agencies for which that they represent. And we've been hearing over the years that they want FDP to do more. They want to. They they want their contributions to FDP to to be elevated um, in a way that that they can demonstrate why they are spending time and sending their people to spend time with FDP, and that matters. From y'all's perspective. Our institutions, ourselves, the sponsors, are there the general community because everybody references the workload survey? Are there other stakeholders that I need to make sure that we have an evaluation question and answer to give back to them? Is there, is there, are we missing something from anyone? Josh, let me. I think you can unmute. I, 
Um, yeah. Yeah. There we go. I, well, I mean, I, I mean, I think our institutions are, but there's a sense in which all all of the faculty at our institutions are 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 in some sense stakeholders in this venture. The money that our institutions are paying for their institutional membership is resources that don't get spent on something else. And they're all uh, affected by, uh, by what we do. I mean, if we reduce the burden or increase the burden or don't take advantage of things that we could do, um, they, they're, stay, they're affected by that. And so they, you know, for the most part, don't even know that we exist. Uh, so, uh, it, it, you know, I think we need to be doing a better job at, at the institutions and communicating out about, about FDP and what it's doing and what, uh, what it could do and, uh, that they, they need to be part of this valuation too. Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a great point. Years ago when we sent out, maybe it was the annual survey, maybe it was the renewal survey. I think it was annual. We used to ask institutions, what have you done to reduce burden at your own institution? We don't do that anymore. We used to do it, but we don't do it anymore. Um, and, and I always took that when I received, when I received the annual, I think it was annual. Was it, was it the annual survey? I always took that as a point of accountability. And, and then we didn't do anything with the information. So then I think we, we quit asking the question and that's a hallmark of evaluation, right? If you're not gonna do anything with the information, don't ask the person the question. Um, and, and what you're saying, Josh, resonates is that if, if, our in, if, if the faculty are at large at our institutions, are the stakeholders, then we need one institutions moving forward with reducing their burden and documenting that and sharing that with them. And two, FDP as a whole of highlighting things that um, were motivated or persuaded by the role of FDP in, in each of you in, in moving, um, moving, moving the glacier forward forward uh, in helping them. And I don't think we do either one really well right now in terms of communicating it. I think we do, we, there are initiatives, but I don't think we communicate it very well. So you can, um, I, I don't think we muted you, but if you wanted feedback on that, you could share it. Um, anyone else on the stakeholder question? because I don't want to act like this is fully baked either. I'm still typing based on the feedback I received from the committee and I, I wrote that one down. Others? Nothing? Okay. All right, so let's uh, go to the next slide. Um, and the next slide. All right, so, so we asked some key questions. Um, and, and they were centered around the focus, right? And trying to get some benchmark information. And I had this conversation with the committee, what the working group, what should we evaluate? And, and I think asking about evaluation without asking what, we're, what activities for which that we're carrying out to be evaluated, um, we, we, we kind of projected activities that we wanted, that we hoped FDP were, were implementing uh, so that they could be evaluated. Um, and, and trying to get a baseline benchmark other than who attends the meetings, what representation do they have from faculty and admin staff. But, but more so, what are we, what are we achieving as an organization? So let me, let me ask this question, which is a bit loaded and I mentioned it before. From your personal engagement with FDP, from your, from your own individual level engagement, when you leave FDP at the end of a meeting or at the end of the year, 
what contributions would you, do you make or would you want to make to say that my time at FDP is, is beneficial to continue to do this activity? So what, what does your success, what does success in your engagement with FDP look like for you as an individual? What does that contribution look like? And I, if I can get three people to answer that, that would be helpful to me. Anyway, JR, you've been at FDP a long time. And let's see, I don't have the magic wand to unmute. JR, do you, do you want, at the end of the year, you look back at your time, what does success of your own personal commitment to FDP look like? Well, uh, do you want me to respond to that, Robert? Yeah. <laughs> I've probably been around too long. I don't know. But, um, you know, I, I think um, success would look like the appropriate engagement of all parties. And, you know, I think, I think we're inching towards that goal. But um, while some federal agencies are, are strong proponents of engagement, others um, sit back and superficially engage. And um, that engagement, I think, you know, I, th I, th I, I, I think the history of this is it goes back to a senator from Florida, Lawton Childs, who, who really pushed this idea. And um, he, he, as I remember him in my youth, he was a, um, he was a gatherer. He brought people together around common ideas. And um, we're not getting there yet. So the question is, how do we get there? And um, I don't have, you know, I've been swinging at this windmill for a while and I, I obviously don't have the answer. So, you know, I'm, I, I keep showing up to, to listen to the next generation that has that answer. So um, my fingers are crossed, I, but I think that's the goal. How, how to get us all on the, on the common ground because, because some of this work <clears throat> is actually turning into burden for agencies as well as institutions. Yeah, and, and and they're not they're not embracing it with the joy and um, and and desire that they did maybe twenty years ago or thirty years ago. Sounds like a relationship that is matriculated. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'd be interested to hear what others um, you know think about this. No, that's that that's helpful, Joshua. Well, I, I feel like I'm talking way too much. No, no, today, we, we, but, need you, we need your input. <laughs> but I, I mean, if I think about the things that, that have felt most successful to me, I mean, and, and this is backward looking rather than forward looking, I think that um, discussions among the faculty about things like um, how IRBs implement what ought to be common federal uh, requirements on different campuses and taking that back to uh, people in power at, uh, you know, in leadership roles at my university and saying, you know, here's this whole range of stuff. How can we look at what other people are doing and how can we get greater clarity about what we, we really have to do um, and what parts of it we feel like we need to do because of something specific to our institution. And, and really having that conversation, I thought that was that was a place where I felt like I really did something constructive. I think another um, example that that I, I think about is um, uh, getting involved with with star metrics when Julia Lane was uh, trotting that out at uh, at FTP. So now I'm going to date myself uh, mm -hmm. at, at just how long I've been involved with with this stuff myself. But um, you know, I, I mean. I'm not sure at the end of the day that that turned out to be everything it promised to be, but it was it was an interesting conversation that I think would have been really hard to have someplace else than FDP and to take it back to my institution and to be an advocate for 
participating in it. I, you know, so I, again, I think those, those are the kinds of discussions that I think um, faculty can get involved in and uh, can do something constructive. And it is really about not, not just what do we tell federal agencies or what can we get them to do differently, but it's about how we work with our own institutions and how we're informed by understanding the larger universe in which they're operating. No, that's, that's very helpful. Stephen and then Jerry, Stephen. Uh, well, I think Josh just took my comments, but yeah, I think that is one of the biggest things we do and that, you know, we've been interacting or I've been there not as long as many others, but um, is the interactions we have amongst ourselves bringing, if I can bring an institutional perspective from the type of institution I met specifically, and hear how others have dealt with those issues or you know that type of burden, or maybe they bring an issue and I can contribute in terms of how we have been able to accommodate that type of burden, then I think that is a success. And I must admit, it took a couple of years of practice with FDP meetings to get into that mode. And then to go back to the federal agencies, I'm still not sure we're getting back to the federal agencies, but I think right now the success I have is just amongst the other institutions and hearing, you know, sharing, if you're commiserating, whatever the right word is, um, problems and solutions. Um, and I think that really does help. So, so let me ask before we call on Jerry, do you think in this virtual format that we've kind of entered into and maybe in the future to be hybrid, that we are creating the space where institutions can talk about novel implementation strategies of solving some of these problems? I do think it's more difficult. Um, I, I think that personal interaction is pretty important because some of these, you know, when you start airing stuff, you know, you, you want to feel comfortable in large groups and having 700 people on uh, a Zoom isn't necessarily the most comfortable place to be and airing those types of issues. But I, I do think it's certainly better than nothing. I think, I, you know, I think having good participation, you know, over the years we've talked about you know, participation, having 75 faculty participate rather than 30 because it's Zoom is not a bad thing. Um, so, I mean, there's gives and takes on that one. So that's a complex question actually. I got, I got tons of complex, <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> I appreciate you. <laughs> well, well, cause I, I think, I think when we set up the evaluate, the reason why I ask is because when we set up the evaluation of what we're, what we're measuring that matters, it provides instructions on what we should be doing to get there. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, so if, if these things are important and we're going to measure it, it, on. Um, uh, as a result, it creates activities to make sure we're doing it for the measurement. And so, so that's, why, that's why I'm asking the questions. And so forgive me that I'm being provocative. It, no, uh, no, it's a good, I, I, don't, I, I understand that. It, it's a very complex scenario. I think getting people together to talk like we are doing now is very good. Um, talking in person, I think might carry a little bit more interaction and spark things after the fact, the one-on-one -on -one types follow-ups, which is very important too. Yeah. You know, I just want to jump in and say too, because um, I know we have many brand new faculty reps on the call. Um, and I think you're raising an issue that a lot of uh, our faculty reps may want to hear about, Stephen. I don't know, do you want to say a word about what FACT does? Because I think this kind of is right in the FACT wheelhouse of trying to utilize FDP as a common platform, but also to connect with you know, right. the, the theories and themes of FDP back at our home institution. Jerry, I am going to get to you, but, okay. you know. Yeah, so FACT is a committee um, that formed a couple years ago, and it really is meant to be pairs of um, research, administrators, research administrators with their faculty um, from different institutions, spanning different types, different locations, you know, different funding agencies as targets. And it is really to try to understand as we've come to figure out in some of our early work, what are, what's going on at the institutions or different institutions um, that really create different levels of burden 
for the same policies. Um, I mean, if you think of it, we all face the same policies, but when you look at that faculty workload survey, you know, it, it invokes different levels of um, burden at different institutions. And we're trying to understand some of uh, how we interact at our own institutions or how we interact together as research admin and PIs, how we can better accommodate some of that burden or how others have accommodated that burden. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Jared. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I just think that the uh, um, uh, process of, uh, of meeting with the, the agencies is sometimes put into a much more static role than is necessary. Um, you know, all the agencies are changing. Uh, they're changing in terms of the way they manage data within themselves and how they collect data. And the really important part is to manage that change over time. There's a lot of things that were discussed. It's discussed as agencies do it this way and we do it this way and how can we make this easier? But that's actually not the landscape we're in. We're looking at agencies that are constantly changing their, um, uh, their own uh, computer, computerization processes and they're managing their own data and we can either let them manage it um, like Facebook does with no consideration for the public, or we can help them management, manage it in a way that decreases our burden and their burden at the same time. A little known aspect of this is every time an agency collects data, that's work for them. But of course it's work for us as well, because we have to provide the data and they have to collect it. The less data they have to collect, the less work they have to do. We save them a bunch of time. The less data they collect, the less we have to give them, which saves us time. Um, but we can manage the growth into more and more digital technologies and systems um, if we do it together in ways that make our, both of our burdens less. It's a kind of win-win um, uh, part of thing, but we lose if we think NSF always does it this way and they always will do it this way and it's never changing and that somehow we want them to change. No, they're constantly changing. And we need to be part of that change and we need to direct it in ways that make both of our jobs easier so that they can uh, do what the sign on my wall says, which is just a fun, good science. Because that's what they gave me when I, when I left because that was my quote at most of the meetings. I think it's really important um, that we understand that dynamic, that we're part of a dynamic change and we have to manage that dynamic in the best way we can. That, that's really kind of what I wanted to put out there because I heard a lot of people saying in a rather static way. Um, and that, that's really uh, a, a lack of understanding of, of the situation that federal agencies in, are in and our own universities are in. Uh, we're quite different. So, so that, that's our, our goal is really to manage change in the right way. Uh, very true. All said. All right. So last slide. Go to the next slide real quick. Um, so, so let me just ask this last question while before we wrap up. When we when we look at the workload survey, and we're thinking about FDP accomplishments, my question to you all is. I guess multi-part question, because I guess that's the way I think. One, should there be an emphasis of the evaluation on accomplishments related to the items that bubbled up in the workload survey? I guess would be the first question I would ask you. And, and, and I see Steve shaking his head. Are others, is there, is there a thought? Or is it six o'clock and we're all tapped out? It's 5.55 <laughs> and I'm guessing people are pretty tapped out, um, but I do want to make sure, um, you know, that everybody gets a chance um, to comment if they want to. Yeah, and I'll try to get out the sun, but my son is. <laughs> and in the meantime, I want to remind everybody that we have a happy hour set for tomorrow um, at from six to seven, which I put in the chat. 
uh, please don't hesitate to join. It's an even more informal conversation and a way to get to know each other and try to break up some of the uh, social distance that we sometimes have um, on our Zoom space. But um, let us return to any, any comments um, that any of you have in response to Robert's question. And so Steve, if we can un un unmute Steve and then we'll- All Right, wrap. so done. Sorry, I, I just think that that faculty workload survey is perhaps one of the most um, notable thing that's come out that you know, everybody knows about it and to not try to capitalize on that uh, as what we're doing to directly assess that would be a missed opportunity. And I do think we've done a lot. I mean, IRB wizard that's been going on, CUSP. I mean, there's a lot of things we've been doing that directly ad addresses the highest impact um, parts of that. So I think that's, just an opportunity we can't miss. Okay. Yeah, that, thank you for the feedback. I, I, I wanted to be sure because his, historically we haven't rolled up the accomplishments in, in a way that I, I think would resonate with our many, many, many stakeholders. So I don't think yeah. we have to limit it to that, but yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. One of the things I, I really, yeah, I agree with Nadine's comment about publishing as well. I think one of the most important things we do is the report writing and the convening aspect. Um, I think many people were commenting yesterday on the NIH strategic plan. Um, and I think that qualitative case study, um, you know, to show some of the, the how funding led to discoveries, if there was an applicable way of doing that for us, that would be a really great way, I think, to capture some of our impact um, by like looking, let's say, at a demonstration that we would have done and showing the life cycle of that demonstration and how it actually did result in something uh, beneficial for the scientific community or the survey itself. So just just two cents from- No, it makes sense. I mean, part of evaluation is, is really- the dissemination, which is really the marketing of the accomplishments afterwards. Uh, and, and we need to get back in the business of, of touting accomplishments and which we'll, we'll be able to capture through measurement. Okay, so thank y'all uh, for this part. If y'all have any feedback over the next two weeks, I'm gonna finalize the draft uh, for broader dissemination and getting more feedback related to that. I'm blocking the sun with my hand. Um, and so if you have any feedback you want to provide, you can provide it to me via email. Uh, and uh, I could post my email if that's helpful. I think y'all know how to find me, but I'll type it in here just in case anybody wants uh, to contact me. So I'll turn it back over to Michelle to close us out. Thank you all so much for your time and attention this afternoon to what I hope has been an interesting conversation for all of you. I also put my email in the chat. I'm always happy to hear from folks. Um, as we've noted, you'll be hearing from us because we do have these many thought exchanges and, uh, and, and groups increasingly seeking the input of the faculty on their endeavors. I wanna thank everyone for the work that you are doing, for those of you who are connected to working groups and committees and, and so forth. Uh, we really value all of that effort. And I hope you can see from this conversation um, around federal engagement uh, and evaluation that we really, really value that input. Um, so with that, I hope I'll see some of you at the happy hour tomorrow and enjoy the rest of the FDP meetings. Thank you all so much for your time. <laughs>